Welcome back Gain and in this lecture we will discuss L levels and the stages of learning. In the US today many immigrant children get placed into a grade 2 or 3 levels below their actual grade level solely based upon their ability to speak English. An example. I had a student in Saipan that was a Chinese student. He was in 4th grade, and did not speak English. The school management wanted to place him into 1st grade. I asked to work with him for a few weeks before they made the decision. First, I gave him some basic math tests and he passed test. Then I gave him some science tests, and again he passed. I finally showed him several phrases written in several Chinese dialects and he pointed at Mandarin. I began to teach him phrases with the Mandarin dialect so he knew what he was speaking. After two weeks, I invited his classmates over to practice with him. He then started to play sports and within three or four months was conversing with his classmates without my help. The big problem you have when you place ELL students, whose educational level is much higher, a fourth grader being placed into into first grade, you're going to, to teach that student ABCs. The student will go crazy and begin to act up. When this happens the student is considered language deficient or has a learning disability. A lot of ELL students actually are given services that they don't need and are forced into programs that actually do more harm than good. Be aware of this. We talked about this before. The effective filter. The effective filter is an imaginary wall that students put up when they're learning and become stressed. If the students get too stressed out, they'll put up this imaginary wall and they will not learn. When students get scared in class, they will panic and not be able to learn. Try to make learning fun, but at the same time challenging. Always make the lessons a little harder than the learner's level. Use charts, graphs and make mind map. When you make a mind map, the students will be able to put things together and make connections. A helpful hint would be to use the students L1, their first language, or culture into the lesson plans to help draw interest into the lesson. There are five stages of learning. These are pre-production, early production, speech emergence, intermediate fluency and advanced fluency. The pre-production is usually a silent period and this usually is about three to six months when a student begins to learn English. They are listening and taking everything in. Then the early production, which usually lasts about another six months. The big problem with this stage is when a student comes to United States that has never heard English spoken by a native speaker, but only a local teacher. The student doesn't understand what is being said and cannot answer in an articulate way. They may be intermediate students, but they cannot speak or listen in English at that grade level. Their pronunciation is going to be horrible and they cannot listen at all because their listening skills are based upon listening to a local teacher, not a native English speaker and have not been developed. You must speak slower to build up their skills. You may also consider putting up a listening station so the learner can listen to a person reading a story. You may want to add flashcards to the lesson. After you feel confident the student understands the words, shuffle and mix up the cards so the learner has the cards randomly showing the English word or their mother language. What this will do is to retrain the brain to think in both languages. The learners will learn faster and easier this way. An example of this was when I was in Korea teaching. I went to a market was asking for condensed milk and they brought a lady over that could speak English. Every time I asked for condensed milk she asked me to speak slower. I eventually wrote condensed milk down on paper for her to understand. She did and in all reality, was probably an intermediate level student, but she had not developed her listening skills. The pre-production stage is known as the silent period and students have about 500 words in their lexicon. Sometimes when this happens, the student begins to stare at you like a deer staring in the headlights. Many teachers take this for a learning disability. Remember that it may take up to six months for the students to start speaking. Many times the student may actually mock you or mimic you when you're talking. You may be teaching and the student be repeating what you're saying out loud. Some students do this to improve their speaking. Others read just irritating. Listen to what they say and take notes. Use TPR. Use listening activities to help them get to the next stage. 
Use a shoulder buddy or a partner that speaks their language who can help the, the student learn. Again, use audiobooks at the listening station so they can listen and read at the same time where they can actually see and hear the words. When students are thrown into a classroom where no one speaks their native language, they hear English being spoken and it's extremely fast. Again, use flashcards. If possible, use both languages. Use one side in English, the other side in the native language. Start out on the native language side and try to get the learner to say the English word. Then eventually what you want to do is you want to mix it up where you're showing the English word and the native word so they can try to use their mind to think what the word is. This will eventually show that they understand the lesson. Early production lasts about six months and the students should have doubled their words to about 1,000 words and can speak one or two word phrases. Sometimes they'll accidentally use their grammar from their L1 when they're trying to speak a language. So try use yes and no or questions that require the students to use less than one or two word responses. Don't make them say a complete sentence and refuse to give the students an opportunity to participate in the classroom activity. If you ignore the student, they will just give up. Use pictures to support questions. Modify the content to their level of English to help them be able to pass the course. Build vocabulary by using pictures, flashcards, listening activities, use listening stations. Simplify the content material. Use books and predictable texts and support learning with graphic organizers charts and graphs. Try to get them to write short sentences if possible and use a frame or scaffolding techniques. Speech Emergence has a lexicon about 3,000 words. The students can communicate with simple phrases and sentences. The students can answer simple questions correctly and they can read stories and support ideas solely from pictures. You may want to give the student tasks that have them speak phonetically when they read. Study buddies can help reading short stories and writing dialogue in their journals. Have the students write stories about the stuff that interests him and what they did over the weekend and let them express their own thoughts and ideas. This will help them with their creative writing and objective writing. Intermediate level is when learners have acquired about 6,000 words. This would be equivalent to 5th or 6th grade levels and the students will begin to create more complex sentences. They can share their thoughts. You can ask questions to clarify what they're learning. They can work grade level classes with or without teacher support. They need to have native language or L1 strategies included in the lessons. If they still have errors in grammar O, oh, you may want to give them handouts from an ELL class or book to help them find what their mistakes are. They should be able to begin to make inferences from what they learned and if they show progress can be mainstreamed into the classroom. Advanced fluency may take 4 to 10 years. When the students graduate high school or college, they should be near native ability in their speaking and most of these students should be exited from the L programs, but they still will need continued support, especially in history and social studies and writing because they need to learn the history of the USA if they attend college. They may have been studying U.S. history for two years and while the other students may have been studying U.S. history for like 10 years so this course may be very difficult for them to understand. How long does it take to become fluent? Well, it really depends on the student because some students will learn items based on their needs and interests and normally it's 4 to 10 years, but it can take as little as 2 years. With the effective filter, it may take more or less depending on how much work the teacher wants to put into it. The Chinese student I mentioned earlier, was mainstreamed in one year and a year after that. I met him and he was translating Chinese into English for me so he was actually close to becoming fluent. Instruct L is the same as you would any other student. Just remember they don't speak English and you may have to teach like an 8th grade L student who's brand new to English like you would to a 1st or a 2nd grader learning English. Children can learn many languages when they're young and they will prefer one language over the other. This is known as prestige dialogue where children may only want to speak English and not their native tongue which actually irritates parents and grandparents. If you can use both language to instruct children, if there's confusion, speak slowly, and clearly explain what you're asking. Use different terms or describe things in many different ways to foster understanding because when you do this the students are more likely to understand what you're saying. 
If you say the bird flies in the air and their wings are out, you can show your arms and then you can explain what a wing does. When you do this they have a better chance to understand a little bit better and easier. Well that is all the time we have for today. I hope to see you next time.